sinners. Wow, we're on time. 78% of you in a survey with Pew said there's too much focus in politics when it comes to being divisive. They said they would like to have their uh, leaders um, face the problems they have and not be so quick uh, to point out problems with others. They would like your the, the 78% of Americans would like to see you reach across the aisle. 57% of Americans also say that there's too much attention placed on the conflicts and the partisan nature of politics. And this gets to an article that was in the Wall Street Journal. They were sort of pointing out that what is it like if um, my wife's apology for my politics? So they're featuring is the, the guy's a Republican, I'm assuming. Correct. The, well, the woman is a, a Democrat. And they're all under the same roof. And they argue and they fight all the time. Was it the wife? The guy's got a little note or something that he gets for his wife? So there's two stories. The one is the wife has a little card that she hands out to people at parties and stuff that says, I would like to apologize for my husband on the night of blank. And then she fills in the date uh, because he gets so heated with his political talk and at social events. Yeah. Okay. That makes him feel really good. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to leave. Oh, honey, don't forget to bring those cards along. Yeah. Unless he has a sense of humor about the whole thing. I assume he does. So then it warns people that he's going to try to engage. And which brings up, can you be happily married to somebody that has a different opinion of you politically? So you think of James Carville and Mary Matt, Mary, Mary, Madeline, Madeline, what's her last name? Yeah, I'm last working name. on it. I'm Maybe, working on it. You know, ask the chat, chat, <laughs> GBT. Um, and... I've seen the two of them together. Uh, Mary Madeline. Mary Madeline, yeah. I've seen the two together. It's not an act. I've actually seen them in public uh, at different events, and they do really get along with each other, uh, and they just have this clear understanding that, you know, you've got this point of view, I've got this, um, but they also know that's how they make money, um, so they can disagree and be not disagreeable to one another. But I think what has happened in... We don't have, I'm going back to um, Robert Putman's Bowling Alone. And he wrote the book in the late 90s, and he basically said people aren't joining clubs anymore. They're not part of civil um, engagement, whether it's bowling or softball or even voting or being part of some community, you know, the Eagles Club or the Kiwanis or Rotary. People don't join stuff like they used to. And if you were on a baseball team with somebody, you care more about how well they hit than who they vote for, right? But if you start the relationship from a political point of view, the person has no sort of capital, no equity to draw upon. You could say, well, I, you know, if you were say you're bowling or something, I, I don't like, I don't like Don, but uh, I don't like his politics, but I love him. I love to bowl with him, right? Because if you build the relationship on something other than politics, well, then the, you can, you got some flexibility. You, you cut the guy some slack. But when people are not really part of a community or group, and all we are is in these tribes of left and right, blue and red, uh, liberal and conservative, then you're already starting out by, you know, firing at one another, right? So that's part of the problem. And I was trying to see, I think there's an article that uh, Putman has done an additional piece on, the New York Times has a part on it, and they're following up. And he also sort of backs that idea up, that if, if you're a part of a group, you wouldn't care about the person's politics. I've got friends that are left and right. I know not to argue with them. I had a friend um, who was a really, really good friend. He was a best man uh, at wedding number one. Uh, and he came out. We had, And I was his roommate in college. And then we were roommates in uh, New York City. Great guy. And then we had a horrible falling out. It really wasn't that bad. Just other than the fact that he was shocked that he was voting for Bush. And I said, well, yeah. He goes, I can't believe you're going to vote for him. I said, why? And he got very upset, and he was voting for Clinton. That's how long ago it was. I remember exactly where I was when I was on the phone with him. I said, are we really going to let this, like, be a big problem? And he goes, yeah, it is a big problem. And that was the last time I spoke to him. So sad. I know. So I was going to reach out and find him. I did find him. Uh, and then I went on Facebook and on Instagram, and I found him. And, whew. <laughs> is he fringy? No, he just a right. lot Different. of a lot of vote for Kamala Harris stuff. I thought, well, yeah, I yeah but you you were friends before that. He was your best man. Like you, I you know, but most of the stuff that's on the, the 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 social is all political. Yeah, but that's not you know you don't know him from social media. You know him from him being your roommate and your best man at your wedding. 
So reach out again. Absolutely, and then you got you. Otherwise, he you could he could say the same thing about you that you just dismiss them because of his politics, and that's that's what's unfortunate these days. Okay, all right. On your word, I will try that. I'm proud of you, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, there's, there's, <laughs> Joe can't see me. There's no way I'm going to do that. Okay. 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 Right. But, but, and another example is you and Felix. We had Felix on the other day. Yeah. And, and you guys, it was so funny to have you guys in here roasting each other for like 10 minutes and not talking about his podcast, which is the <laughs> reason he came in. Uh, and we put a clip up and people are, a lot of people are surprised. Like, wait a minute. I thought. I thought John is is a uh, you know a staunch Republican and Felix is a liberal. Yeah. How how is it that they're friends? And that shouldn't be confusing to people. Yeah, I don't get this. Um, I, I don't understand why you have to all of a sudden decide that person's never going to be your friend again, no. right? No, I've known Felix for years, and my politics and his politics. Yeah, we don't agree on that stuff, but he's funny and smart and yeah. kind, and no, we have more laughs. Yeah, I don't. I I think the the problem. I don't think we're as divided as people want. That the media wants us to believe that we are. Right. I, I think they foment that because it makes it more interesting, right? If it bleeds, it leads, and you know, we're, you see the they get the crazy person on the one side, the crazy person on the other from being in news and going out and getting interviews. Listen, if just somebody says something kind of cut down the middle, it doesn't have any twist and turn. There's no spark to it. That's not the one you use. Boring. If you're interviewing somebody on the street, you get the person to say the outrageous thing. Then you get the other person to say the other outrageous thing. And you're like, okay, now I've got something. We can go back and edit this together. So you always want to show the, 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 the extremes. Right. So that's all we see. So then when you're forced to all of a sudden say, what team are you on? I guess I'm on team you know, extreme here or extreme there. But most people, most people um, are okay with their neighbor having a different politic uh, and a different position. It's only when all of a sudden you get into the idea that the pie is baked and that the power is set and that the economy and the amount of uh, revenue generated by the economy is also set. And then if you start to believe the one group is getting it and they're taking it from me, or one group is taking it and giving it to somebody else, that you're somehow losing something. It's the scarcity of whatever the commodity is that causes the anger. You think about it when you go get on a plane and you're told that there's limited overhead space. Well, now people start to push, the elbows come out, people are less generous with their time, they're less courteous with each other because there's a sense of scarcity and there's a sense of, I better hurry up and get my bag in the overhead, right? So whenever there's a sense that there's a limited amount of revenue, a limited amount of power, you're, the government's giving it to one group and not giving it to the other group, but that's where people start uh, to feel like um, I should start to take some shots at somebody. Keeping Just... my legs in my pants and my body in my shirt. <laughs> Is that Felix? Yeah. What was that referring to? I don't know. What was uh... that to? A, I don't remember. Just at a all. basic Felix drop. Yeah, but, but thirty thirty three days from now, this well, hopefully this will be behind us, and you should probably not sacrifice relationships. Absolutely, and it goes right, Sue Bell. Hey everybody, it's Sue Bell and Palm Beach. Hey Sue. Oh, and I oh just wanted... wow, wow, Vote for Andrew. Sue. <laughs> That's Sue yeah. Bell. Yeah, she's in a new she's in a new dress.